Throughout the past year, global financial markets have been fixated on domestic risks to China's growth capacity and structural health, namely their COVID zero policy and real estate sector reform. As 2022 concludes, however, it is increasingly becoming clear that these factors are turning from headwinds to tailwinds, but in contrast, that external demand is becoming a concern. With respect to COVID-19, by itself, the weekly case count continues to create anxiety over economic activity, with a number of cases at or near recent highs in many regions. However, if assessed together with the response of government, we see a strong indication that authorities are increasingly learning to live with the virus. According to Bloomberg reporting on China's latest policy changes, local authorities have essentially been banned from enacting aggressive suburb or sometimes city-wide lockdowns, which have previously shocked activity and sentiment, with only individual apartment buildings to be targeted with full lockdowns from now on. Testing regimes are to remain part of everyday life, but only in a passive manner, with a recent negative test still required to enter some buildings and transport, but the emergency city-wide test now an experience of the past. Significantly, These changes are being sold as only a refining of COVID-0 rules, backed by a better understanding of the virus and vaccines, arguably in an effort to slowly rebuild confidence in social engagement and the domestic economy. Residential construction is another area of the economy where trust needs to be rebuilt. From the recent decisions of authorities, it seems a new phase in the sector's rebuild has begun. Whereas the previous measures sought to provide assurance existing projects would have the immediate funding and liquidity they need to continue, Now growth in construction is being targeted. For developers, the maturity of bank and trust debt during the next six months can be extended for a year. Caps on bank lending to the sector are also being eased temporarily to provide the sector with additional medium-term funding and new bond issuance is also being promoted with guarantees provided where necessary. For households, not only is the threat to credit scores from the recent mortgage boycott being removed, but authorities are encouraging banks to negotiate with existing borrowers and off-the-plan purchases to ease financial stress and uncertainty. Meanwhile, the cost of ownership continues to be reduced at the local government level through the management of loan-to-value ratios, interest rates and incentives for first home buyers. Growth in the rental housing stock is also being promoted. It is not a coincidence that these changes in policy are occurring as the global economy turns down. Rather, China's government is clearly seeking to manage aggregate cyclical momentum by increasing domestic growth as support from exports wanes. On this front, though, there are other developments worthy of note. China's promotion of domestic industry to its own households through the dual circulation and Made in China 2025 initiatives is as much about developing new brands and products that can be sold to the world, particularly the rest of Asia, as it is about reducing China's import bill. On both fronts, the government has been very active in encouraging private industry to grow the reach and stature of existing product lines but also then to use the catalyst for growth created by the green transition and technology adoption across the region to rapidly take global market share and leadership in new products such as electrical vehicles, green power and storage. Importantly, success in these markets will not only bring increased national income and job opportunities, but also geopolitical strength across Asia and globally. We'll see you next time.